Hi, welcome to the next of our series of mini lectures on the Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle and Coherence. These are two ideas that are uh, conceptually fairly simple, but are often misunderstood and can lead to some uh, non-intuitive uh, formulas and non-intuitive things that you sort of have a hard time getting your head around in many cases. And we'll cover both of them today. Uh, you've all heard of the Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle. It's one of the cornerstones of modern physics and quantum mechanics. And it's also something, although we don't call it the Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle, we use a lot in electrical engineering. And the Uncertainty Principle says that there's a natural limit to the accuracy of, of any measurement. And for certain pairs of variables or physical constants or physical quantities, I should say, that you would measure, uh, if you measure one with great accuracy, there's a lot of uncertainty in another one. And these two uh, variable pairs are called conjugate variables. That's the name we give to it, conjugate variables. Um, and understanding the uncertainty principle, uh, it's not an exact formula, but it gives you a powerful rule of thumb to really understand some of the basic ideas of electrical engineering so you don't do design of systems that violate the principle because as far as we know it can't be violated. So let's get an idea of what the uncertainty principle is. Um, there are different ways that you can phrase the uncertainty principle um, depending on the pairs of conjugate variables that obey uncertainty that you're looking at. Um, the first one of these up here is the accuracy of the position and the accuracy of the momentum when multiplied together has to be greater than some value or H is Planck's constant. And so this is position and momentum right here. P is the uh, symbol for momentum. Note we'd have another delta Y, P sub Y, delta Z, delta P sub Z here if we looked at momentum in different directions. Uh, we won't be using the momentum one that much in this class, although we will a little bit when we start to talk about optical tweezers. Another one that's very important is the wave vector k in some direction or the, the, the sort of window or size of the k vector uncertainty in some direction multiplied by the size of the wave, the actual aperture of the wave, has to be greater than some value. And we'll see an example of this next time. The one we're most familiar with in electrical engineering it ties with the temporal response and the bandwidth of systems. And this is the third one right here, the variation of the frequency multiplied by the, the time variation has to be greater than some value. And what this says essentially, if you have a small delta t, i.e. you're trying to send data at a very high rate with very short pulses, say a digital or binary signal, uh, that means delta nu has to have some fairly large value. Of course, if delta t is small, delta nu has to be fairly big. And that says you need a broad bandwidth of your system to be able to send this data. If you have a system with a very narrow bandwidth, uh, small delta nu, then delta t has to be big, and you can't send data at a very high rate. And of course, if we take the standard Heisenberg uncertainty, or excuse me, the standard Heisenberg relationship for energy of a photon or, or other type of particle, E equals h nu, uh, this one of the uncertainty principles leads naturally into that one. And it says that if uh, you know the time or the, the temporal location of a photon very well, then the, there's some uncertainty to the, to the energy. If a, a wave or a photon has a very uh, fixed energy, then it has to be spread out in time. And these are all various statements of the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. And if you're like me, the first couple of times you saw this, you're like, okay, great, you know, this, this doesn't really tell me anything. How does this work? I, I have no idea at all um, how this guy ever came up with this. This seems sort of counterintuitive and unobvious, but it's really fairly simple if you take a look at it. So let's take something like a sine wave, which has just appeared on the screen here. And this is a very uniform sine wave. You would say it has a very well-defined frequency. And if we can essentially count um, between the peaks on our, our sine wave here, and we know the time window, delta t, then we can get a pretty good idea of the frequency. Um, so let's do something here. Let's, let's window the signal in time and say the sine wave has a definite beginning to it and a definite end. We've, we've put some time window, delta t, on it. And, and in this case, delta t is pretty big. 
I can still measure my sine wave with a great deal of accuracy because I can count basically one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine troughs, and I can measure the time from from trough number one to trough number nine. And if I know the time and I divide by nine, then I know the period of the wave and I can get the frequency with a, a fair amount of accuracy um, because I can measure a large number of troughs. However, if my time window shrinks, now I'm counting peaks. I've only got one, two, three, four, five. And my time measurement, my delta T is a little bit smaller here. And I don't really know the frequency quite so accurately anymore. Um, because I don't have such a big measurement window. And we can, of course, take this to the next extreme where I only measure one period of the wave. Again, there's more and more inaccuracy, but still you can say this wave has a pretty well-defined frequency. But if we go to the next extreme and do this, uh, what's the frequency of that? If you're just given that part of the wave, your time window, delta t, is very, very small, then you have a lot of uncertainty to your frequency. You really don't know what that frequency is. And that's what the uncertainty principle says, that the uncertainty or spread of the frequency multiplied by the uncertainty of the time, which in this case is very, very small, has to be bigger than 1 over 4 pi in this version of the thing. And so essentially for this small delta t, then my delta nu is going to be greater than or equal to 1 over 4 pi delta t. Delta t is a small number, so delta nu is going to be pretty big. There's a lot of uncertainty in the frequency of that particular wave. And that's the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Um, where we're going to encounter it, uh, mainly in this course, is in terms of the uncertainty of the k vector uh, as related to the size of beams. And so if you have, and let's go ahead and use a, a red pen here. If you have a beam of size or radius w naught, um, the uncertainty in k is 2 over w naught. As w naught gets bigger, the uncertainty in the k vector shown in the green gets smaller. And k essentially, remember, is the propagation vector. It tells very well defined uh, what the direction of propagation is. And that means as our beams get smaller and smaller, there's going to be more and more uncertainty in the direction the photons are going. And uh, it turns out that k, the wave vector, is related to the momentum of the photon. This is just another way of rest restating the momentum position uncertainty relationship. Of course, in the other case over here, if you have a large delta nod, then your beam directions can be fairly narrowly defined. And what this says is you need a large diameter beam to have a laser go in one clearly defined direction. Let's take a look at this and see what this means in the case of two extremes. And so essentially what we're saying here is that delta k sub y is 2 over w naught. And so if you have a fairly small source here, you have a large spread of k. On the other hand, if your source were to become larger, one would expect this angle right here would get smaller. And there are some equations in your reading calculating that angle. So let's look at the two extremes as I talked about. Um, let's say we have a source that's infinite in size, that extends in all directions of space. Um, and it's radiating out a plane wave. For a plane wave, uh, the k vector, or the change of the k vector, the k vector is very well defined. And uncertainty of the k vector is 0 because it is going in one direction. This plane wave has a very well-defined direction of propagation, but of course the size of the plane wave, if you look at the extent of the wave and the source, it has to be infinite for this. On the other hand, if we think about a source that has zero extent, that has no size whatsoever, um, then in fact delta k becomes infinity. And in this case, we have a point source with the wave going out in circles in all directions, and there is no defined direction from a point source. And so the two extremes of a plane wave and a point source we often uh, come across in optics and electromagnetics are essentially the two extremes of the uncertainty relationships. I'm going to pause here, stop, put away the uncertainty relationships because we'll do some problems at it and see how we can do some problems calculating the, the sort of spread of sources and how directional sources are, which are very important properties of laser beams, the fact that they do have very well-defined directions and they can get a lot of energy 
in a very narrow line and talk about one of the other interesting properties of laser beams, which is coherence. And coherence just means a wave isn't a perfect wave. So let's take